What's going on, everybody? Now, now, Murph Man here, and as requested by some of you, uh, I'm going to start my first map making episode. Um, so today, uh, I'm basically just going to go over what I've done so far. Uh, so if you're not familiar with this, I mentioned it in my latest modded survival let's play. I said, uh, how many of you would be interested in me showing you guys uh, what I'm working on in my map? Uh, so I told you guys that I was working on a map called Murph Man's Minigame Resort. And uh, this is the map, uh, so it's basically a bunch of mini games on a little island, and uh, that's basically the whole thing. So uh, I've done quite a bit of stuff so far. Um, I showed you some pictures in my last episode of my modded survival, um, but you didn't actually get to see it in action. Uh, so let me go over everything for you guys, all the redstone and everything. Uh, so two, so far I have two games, uh, boat racing and then volcano survival. Uh, so here in this book, which isn't finished yet, uh, this is going to be like the rule book and everything that you get with it. Um, you can have PvP and like how many players and everything. And then it basically goes over all the rules. Um, so if you want to read the rules quickly here, you can pause the video right now just to read it. Um, but I'm basically going to over each step of it anyway. Um, so basically the first bowler to make it past the finish line uh, with a ring score of 5 wins. Uh, so you can see on the right side of the screen uh, with the new scoreboard option, um, I have 0 rings. Uh, so these are the rings. So they're basically just trip wires connected to a command block. And the command block uh, just adds the closest player's ring score 1. Um, so once you get 5, uh, then you basically race to the finish. So there's five of these things. So it's a race through them and then to get to the finish line. So uh, it's kind of two things in one. It's a race of just getting to the end, but it's also a matter of how many rings you actually score. Um, so let me go over here and I'll show you what happens when you actually start the game. Uh, so this is the start lever right here. And basically, uh, with the new set block commands, um, I can do everything I need to uh, without pistons. Uh, so basically you pull the lever right there and uh, the game will start so what it does is it will actually set fences all around right at the front here I'll show you what I mean it'll set fet it'll set fences right across here so that you can't cheat and go ahead um, of anybody so you all start at the same time um, and then we also have this here which is gonna summon three boats um, all at each of the little stations because this is up to three players. Uh, it's going to put a boat here, a boat here, and a boat here. Um, and then the fences. So you basically want to get in your boat, uh, but you can't pass the fences because they'll be there and you won't be able to get to the finish right away. Uh, so you can't cheat. Um, and then here it'll say on your mark. And then we have some delayed repeaters. And then we have get set. And then we have a bunch of delayed repeaters. Uh, and then we have go. And then basically it gets rid of all the fences. Um, and then you can start. So I'll pull the lever and I'll show you guys what it's like. All right, so let's pull the lever and then we get our boat summoned here. Uh, then we have the fences and uh, you can't actually go. And then you wait till it says on your mark, it says go. Uh, and then your boat turns around and you can actually go. So this is actually pretty hard. You actually have to really control it uh, because if you hit one of these blocks hard enough, uh, you're actually going to crash. Um, so I do have something which I'm going to show you in a sec here um, that. It basically prevents cheating uh, because technically you could go through more than one of these twice um, and you could actually just cheat. So let me go back here um, and get this one and then we'll get the one at the end. Uh, so I have to go over here. Uh, so you can see it's not really that much of a race because you're going to actually be going really slowly. And there my boat just broke. Uh, so you have to, it's basically slow and steady wins the race uh, because you got to get through all those rings. Uh, so now I have a ring score of four and then I go through here. A ring score of five and then I go through the finish line and it says there you go game over uh, see my boy 99 is the winner um, if you're on a server the words won't actually get cut off like they are right here um, but uh, yeah that's basically how it works um, so let me go to the end and show you guys the command blocks at the finish line um, so that's what this little extension here is um, so I haven't actually made something to actually get rid of these boats uh, so you will have to destroy them yourself uh, but here are all the command blocks for the finish. Um, so, here, uh, it's just going to say game over. It'll say uh, every player that has a minimum ring score of 5, it'll say is the winner. So, if multiple people uh, have 5, then I guess it's a tie. Um, it'll TP everybody to that one spot, and it'll set everybody's rings back to 0. So, uh, that's basically how that works. So, that's pretty simple. Um... Now the thing I said that prevents cheating, I'm going to actually show you that. So it won't actually stop you from going back 
in the other ones, uh, but it will prevent you from doing it too much. So it can't do it every time, uh, but it can do it a little bit. So I'll show you what I mean. So down here, I basically have a very simple hopper clock um, with just one item going through it. Uh, it's just four hoppers and then a comparator, uh, which connect to a uh, redstone repeater, piece of redstone, another repeater. Um, and this is testing for anybody who has a ring score of six. So because your goal is to only get five, because there's only five rings, and the only way you could actually get six is if you cheat by going back through one. Um, so that's basically testing for cheaters. And if it detects a cheater, um, it's going to output here uh, to these, which this is going to say, um, if I scroll back here, it's going to say your name, and then it's going to say, okay, so it's going to say, this person is cheating. You can't go back through rings that you've already gone through. Uh, so I'll show you guys, um, I'll actually get six, and I'll show you that this works. Um, and I'm going to go over here, uh, because this is going to set the cheater scores back to zero. So if you cheat, um, you're actually going to have your ring score set back to zero, uh, kind of a punishment for cheating, and then obviously you're probably going to lose because you cheated. Uh, so now I'm going to show you guys um, what will happen, that that line of text will actually come up, and my ring score will be set to zero. Uh, so let me just do this, and then we'll go through one more, and then you'll see in the chat... It's going to say, Smart 99 is cheating. You can't go back through rings you've already gone through already. I'm setting your score back to zero, you cheater. And here I have zero now. Um, and as I said before, uh, some of these words are cut off and continued on the next sentence. That'll be fixed on a server um, for your chat. Uh, but that's basically because my chat, I have the width uh, a little bit different than everybody else's width would be. Um, but if you have it like this, um, you're not going to have as many cutoffs. Anyway, on a server, uh, which you'd likely be playing this on because um, you're going to be playing with multiple people, um, it's going to fix itself there. Uh, even if it's vanilla, it doesn't have to be bucket um, because this uh, map is purely vanilla. Um, so basically, that's boat racing. Um, I'll just go over the rules here again. Uh, so you can be uh, two to three players. Um, you can technically do one if you want to try to beat a time, uh, but it's not going to time it for you. Uh, so that's why I have two to three players. Uh, PvP is off because that wouldn't really make a lot of sense. The first boater to make it past the finish line with a ring score of five wins. There are five rings every time you pass through one, you get a ring point. If your boat breaks, you're out. So the second one we have is Volcano Survival. Now this one is kind of a work in progress. It's not finished yet because um, I'm still deciding on something. Um, I'll show you guys what that is. Uh, but basically, let's get into the actual volcano part of it. So this is just made with some black stained clay, brown stained clay, gray stained clay, uh, just all sorts of stained clay. Um, and then down here is actually the start lever. Now here we have some podzol, which is in the new 1.7 update. Uh, just a little lava stream uh, for aesthetics purposes. And then here we have the actual mini game. Uh, so basically you'll see lava below you and all these little platforms. Uh, but you actually have this little block thing above you. Now you can actually still make these jumps even with that block thing above you. Um, I'm going to drink a fire resistance potion. Um, and then I'm going to go on survival. And then you will see that you can actually make these jumps. You just have to uh, time it right. Uh, you can see I fell there. Uh, as long as you time it right, you can actually get from platform to platform. Uh, so let's read the rules, and I'll actually show you guys uh, what the whole thing is dealing with that. Um, so let me get a milk here just so we can get rid of the fire resistance. Let's drink that. Uh, so basically, the rules are that you can have one to eight players. Um, eight's going to get kind of crowded, but uh, with the number of platforms, it'll still work. Um, and then PvP is your choice. You can have PvP where you can knock each other off, but the game's going to go really quickly. Uh, so it's really all up to you. Um, it's going to say this minigame test parkour skills and strategy. Who can be the last one standing in this exciting challenge? There are eight platforms. Every five seconds or so, a platform and the platform opposite to it will have pistons push out on them, causing you to fall in love and be eliminated. So basically what that means is um, I would have pistons. Um, let me just get a piston here. And what it's going to do is every five seconds or so, it's going to randomly choose pistons and uh, some of the and they're just gonna happen to push out so when it says the platform the platform opposite uh, be like this one and that one this one and that one 
Um, I believe it would be this one and that one, this one and that one, or maybe this one and that one. Uh, I still have to decide that, uh, but that's basically what that means. So every five seconds or so, you're jumping around, jumping around, and randomly one of them's going to push out, and you're going to fall in the lava, and you're going to die. Uh, so the reason that I don't actually have pistons there is I'm still deciding on this. Um, it was originally fire chargers would spawn uh, and be fired at you with the summon command, and that worked, but it didn't actually knock the player into the lava. Um, because they'd be coming from like the middle and they come at you and you'd just be hit against the wall um, And I tried spawning them here making them go out uh, But you need more room backwards that just made them stay there and you wouldn't be knocked down again uh, So that's why I decided pistons uh, And then I decided that pistons wouldn't really work because this is supposed to be some sort of lava mini game Where the volcano erupts and then certain people fall um, so stuff I was thinking of was like lava would appear there, uh, but again that wouldn't necessarily knock you down. It could get other people who are like jumping from here to there and they get caught because the lava flows right here. Um, and then I also decided maybe just have fire spawn, but that again wouldn't knock you in the lava. I was thinking about making this kind of like crumble with the falling sand entity, making it like fall down. Um, so that was a pretty cool idea. Um, and I also had things like making these blocks disappear with the sub block command. Um, I'm still kind of deciding, so I'm not really sure what to do, but I still have a lot of the redstone done, so I'll show you guys. Um, but this also says, uh, over here you'll see, you can jump from platform to platform, but watch your head. If you happen to fall in the lava while jumping to a platform, you're out. So now I'm going to show you guys the redstone, uh, because it is all done. The only thing that isn't done is, uh, actually deciding what I want to do with it. So, uh, the way we have it going here is it's all hidden beneath the sand so I'm actually going to have to destroy a bunch of this but that's okay I'll uh, I'll patch it up after um, so I believe that over here yeah here's where we have it so let me break this just so you guys can see that um, and then we'll do this just trying to open it up uh, so you guys can get a good view of everything um, and then we're gonna need this open uh, with this um, so basically what's going on here is uh, once you pull the lever which is right above here um, it's going to power this command block, which is going to TP everybody into there. And uh, once it does that, uh, there's a little delay for it to do that. Um, it's also going to go over here, and uh, that, I believe, is going to power a piston, um, which is below this sandstone block. If I go under here, you can see the piston there. Um, and then once it does that, that basically makes it so that we have... A uh, little monstable circuit here, and uh, this block here will make this output to here, and uh, this will set a block of stone way over there. And I'm going to show you guys what that is for. So here I have a clock. Uh, it's basically going to go to one and then the other. You'll see here in a second. So it's going to power that. Um, I'll have to show you guys it powering this as well by doing that. So it's going to power the it's going to power this one here and immediately power that one after. So let's see this. So you're going to see it like that. Uh, so basically, what the point of this is is it's like a five second delay for it to do that. That's why I said every five seconds or so. Um, and this one over here, when you pull the lever, basically this push piston and this piston push up, so that these can actually be powered because this clock is going constantly. And uh, basically, that makes it so that it doesn't work when you don't want it to work. Uh, it'll cause unnecessary lag. Uh, so once you pull it, those will go up, and then this starts working. So one of them will place a block of redstone uh, down there, and it's going to replace a block if a block's already there. And this one's going to replace that block of redstone with a block of stone, and uh, vice versa, and it's just going to constantly keep going. So what is the point of that? Well, that's exactly what I'm going to show you. So basically, uh, I went on YouTube, and I saw this video, and it was basically a randomizer. And uh, if I can find the video now, I'll uh, link it in the description. Uh, but this is basically just a randomizer. So what's going to happen is every five seconds or so, a redstone block is going to appear here. And it's going to be immediately replaced by a stone. Uh, so just like it is now. Um, so basically this randomizer was done with a button originally. Um, so to make the pulse just like a button, that's why I have the stone replace the redstone block after like one second or so. So immediately... This will output a signal to this torch, which will shut off this. And shutting off that, that actually has a dropper below it, which is going to spit out these two items. And they're going to constantly go into the dropper, and the dropper is going to drop it into one of them. So basically how this works is the dropper will spit it out, 
but because there's a block above this dropper, it's still going to work. So it's going to spit it out, and it's either going to spit it out to any of these four things. And uh, then the hoppers are going to go right back into the dropper, and it's going to continuously go. Um, and then, but it's not going to continuously go. It's only going to go once because of how quick the pulse is. So then, once that item is chosen, this basically tests for where the item actually is. So if it's, a, if it's right here, then that'll output there. If it's right here, it'll output there. If it's here, it'll output here. And if it's here, it'll output here. So here's the randomizer then. So then whatever one it randomly picks, then it's just going to light a torch. And that to these lamps here are just for aesthetics so I can just see which one was chosen. Uh, so one can be chosen twice in a row. They can be chosen completely apart. So it's basically a four-way randomizer. Uh, so then I have red soap signals going from each of them to two sets of command blocks. Uh, so some of them here, you can see this is a summon fireball. So this was what I originally did. Uh, it's basically just going to summon a fireball um, over there, but I'm not using these now because um, I'm still deciding what to do. Uh, but for now, I still have them. Um, here, I believe I have nothing because I haven't done those yet because I only did two with the fireballs. Um, then here we have nothing as well and you can see the other one at cm with nothing and then this one has nothing as well so all these have nothing but basically what i'm going to do is have them all do command blocks and maybe i could have them uh so originally with the pistons what i was going to do is behind the pistons i was going to have uh like say if this one was chosen um the one in the op the one opposite to it would have a redstone block spawn right behind the piston and immediately be placed by the stained clay uh, so that way, the piston would push out and pull back in again. Uh, so that was an idea that I had. Um, and that's basically how I would have done the piston one. But I'm not a huge fan of the piston one because it doesn't really have to do with Volcano. Um, so I kind of scrapped that. Um, and then I was thinking of lava, but it wouldn't really push. So I'm still thinking of what to do. Uh, but this is basically just a big bunch of redstone. And all it does is it randomizes four ways. So it's randomly going to pick one of these four things and it's going to output to one of these four command blocks uh, so that's basically all this is um, so now I'm going to turn it on I'm actually going to show you guys how the volcano survival works alright so let's start it up here I'm going to flick the lever uh, you're going to see I get teleported right here uh, it's kind of funny actually I'm on the very edge of this block uh, but that's where it teleports me to uh, and then you'll see all this block placed and uh, objects successfully uh, summoned uh, so basically what's going on, if I go down here, uh, you're going to actually see that the redstone block is spawning and that the stone block is quickly replacing it. So let's go down here um, and I will show you guys what's going on here. Uh, so in a second you're going to see that. Uh, so the redstone block basically just uh, will go here and then the stone will immediately just switch it out. Uh, so basically what's going on is that uh, this is working just like a button because it's going so quickly. Uh, so this this design was originally using a button, uh, but I modified it so that I could use set block command to do this uh, So that's basically what's going on a quick pulse uh, and then everything's going through each other uh, And then it's either going to output uh, any of these four torches uh, which leads to these two pairs of command blocks uh, Now of course this one here uh, is going to summon fireballs uh, the rest are all empty uh, But yeah, that's basically it. So let me know in the comments uh, what you guys think about this and uh, what you guys think I should do as far as uh, the pistons go, uh, or if you want me to do fire charges, or fire, or lava, or if you want me to do the crumbling thing. Uh, but let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, but uh, other than that, that's basically it. That's all I wanted to show you guys in the first episode. Uh, so look forward to the next episode soon, uh, as well as another modded survival let's play. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.